What's up guys, JJ here and today we're going to talk about large fish and large tank filtration. So if you have tanks in like the 4 foot range, anything from you know 55 to you know maybe 90 gallons, you're not going to want to miss this one. So hit that like button and stay tuned. So a couple of months ago I did a review on a new filter I got. I got the Marineland internal canister filter and I wanted to test it out. I gave a, a pretty solid review over the product. I liked it on my first impressions but I think it's important for me to update you guys on some of the pros and cons I've seen uh, as the weeks have gone on. Because in the filter and we'll get a close-up look in a minute I really like the flow. It's a very powerful filter for the size and for the price so it has no problem uh, no problem filtering my four foot tanks. It's actually done a great job. But one of the cons was it's a little loud. I don't know, you guys can probably hear it behind me now. But it does get a little loud, and if the filter gets dirty at all, it gets even louder. And I can hear it for me right now, so I know it's time to do some maintenance on that. So we're going to go pull that filter cartridge out and uh, clean it and talk about what the setup is here. So there's my Marineland internal canister filter in there, and it's done a pretty good job over the last three months, but you guys can probably hear it, it's getting a little noisy. And it gets noisy when it gets dirty, so we're going to pull that out and clean it. But while we're here, let's talk about our filtration tote uh, all together. I kept the Marineland in here, but I also added a sponge filter on the other side to give me a little more uh, oxygen and surface agitation as well as more biological filtration. So I just unplugged the filter. I've got a lot of duckweed in this tank. It's actually saved my life as far as water changes go, but it does get everywhere and it does clog up the filter sometimes. So I bet we'll find some duckweed in here as well. All right, so the top of this one just peels off or twists off. And yeah, ugh, look at that filter. That's supposed to be blue. So we know it's doing a good job sucking up the uh, dirt and grime out of the tank, but we got to get that cleaned up. So what I'm going to do is fill up a bucket of water from the tank that's already been treated so we don't kill any of that good bacteria and we're going to rinse this off. So with this filter, it actually came with two different types of, uh, I don't know what you call them, cartridges. I'll show you the other one in a minute, but this one has activated charcoal in it and it's got this sleeve in it so it's pretty good for mechanical and biological filtration the other one is more mechanical it's just for polishing the water which I didn't need because I gotta keep that tank at top condition so we've got the sleeve off and we're just squeezing it out into a bucket of tank water and for anybody who didn't know most of the time we use tank water for things like this so we don't kill the beneficial bacteria that is in the sponge or whatever you're cleaning. So I've given it a couple of squeezes. The tank water or this bucket water looks gross but uh, the filter is getting better here. Oh, it's already not too bad. And there we go, almost good as new. Okay, so now that that filter's clean, it is an absolute tornado in here. We got that water pumping out at a very high flow rate. But it's okay, because guess what? It's gonna push that around, and in 20 minutes or so, this tank's gonna be crystal clear again. All right, it's been a half, about a half an hour. Most of the dust is settled, or so to speak. A lot of it's been picked up by the filter. We got it running at maximum flow again. I will say, when this filter gets dirty, it does run a whole lot slower. Now, one thing you'll notice, if I can get 
Denzel out of the way. Is that my intake right here? Or not my intake. My output right here is pointed down. Not a lot of people would do that. You'd usually point it at the surface so you can get surface agitation. I point it down because I want it to clear the substrate. I don't want any dead zones down at the bottom. And that works out because I get some air and some surface agitation from my sponge filter. But if you don't have a second source, you definitely want to keep that pointed up towards the surface for surface agitation. Now these guys have been pretty good with me, uh, putting up with me digging my hands in the tank today. So I'm going to feed them some little treats. And that's going to be it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next one.